What is going on, everybody? Happy what's that, Wednesday? Happy Wednesday coming to you live here on the Think Grow Rich Mindset Roundtable. Today, it's just going to be me and John on here today. Uh, and today, we're going to be on talking about step number 12, the 13 steps riches, the brain. And so the brain is the, the 12th step, um, and we're gonna be getting down on it. But before we dive in and get down on the brain, uh, I'm gonna let John introduce himself and uh, then we'll get rock and rolling here. So John, let's go. All righty, my name is John Bodnar and I am the CEO of BSB Wealthy Body Coaching. And I'm here today to tell you about my purpose, which is to help people make better decisions for themselves. Not just better decisions, but ultimately the best decisions that they can possibly make day in, day out, and not have it be a burden. And that all comes down to the brain. So I'm really excited to talk about that today. And before we dive in, a, a quick thought. You know, when we study and talk about the brain, it's just the brain studying and talking about itself. It's kind of interesting. So I will say that again, I didn't catch it. So when we, when we study and talk about the brain, that's just the brain studying and talking about itself. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's what we get to do today. <laughs> all right let's let's get down john john got too deep to start off the uh, let's talk yeah can't, can't philosophize that quick too deep too fast man all right well what is the brain right and so as me and john were talking about this before we actually started record button this one's definitely unique um as far as as far as getting getting the the information dissected from the book uh but We'll talk about the brain here. And so every human brain is both a broadcasting and receiving station for thoughts. Uh, every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought, which are being released by other brains. So yeah, so based on the slide, John, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What is your brain saying right now? What's my brain saying about itself? So the broadcasting receiving station, I, I think is just a really good way to put it because we're constantly taking in information and we're constantly relaying information to others. Every time we speak, every time we do an action, relaying information and then we've talked about it ad nauseum but it's you know the 20 million bits of data per second that our brain perceives is constantly being used as a receiving station so we're gonna i imagine we'll talk a little bit more about the subconscious here in a bit um and then i really like this you know the, the every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations and you know it sounds kind of weird but you can't tell me that you've never walked into a room and felt the energy of that room without any words being said, without even seeing anybody's face. You just feel it. And the only way that that, that can really be true and possible is if we are picking up those vibrations. If, if thought is somehow manifesting itself into the physical world, which I firmly believe is true, then yeah, we're going to be able to tell what that energy is. And it's really powerful when you experience that. Yeah. How many times have you ever like, been around somebody and you're thinking a thought and then all of a sudden like that person brings up the same thing you were thinking and you're like whoa that was really weird and like that happens with like i feel like the people who are on the same page as me like you and i've had a conversation like this before me and my wife have like multiple times like like it happens more often than i'd like to admit uh where i'm like i'm really thinking thoughts and then she just will ask me something about what i'm thinking like that is super weird yeah and um i didn't I'm a huge believer in just that, which you just said right there is that like, like people like, like we're able to pick up on each other's thought processes um, without even actually having to say any words. Exactly. And, and another quick example of that, my sister and I, you know, we grew up watching cartoons or, or movies together. And uh, so many times I can actually think of a couple of examples, even we would notice something for the first time at the same time, something that we'd watched 50 times before, like a, like an intro to a show. Like, I've never seen that guy in the corner before. Have you like, Oh, I just saw that too. Like it's, you know, that you're on the same wavelength and people even say that, like, that's a common phrase. Like, Oh, we're on the same wavelength. And it's because it's real. It's there. And we get to exploit that, which is pretty cool. One, one example too is last week we were both at, at a, at a Chris Crone event. And one of the, one of the processes or exercise that he does is has us look face to face with a stranger and basically tell them the greatness that we see in them. And so I remember, so I've done this, I've done this process a few times now, but to this time I was really conscious. And as a person was, was telling the greatness they saw in me, like I was, I was actually like sending a signal. I was like, I was like, 
thinking about uh, like the things I wanted them to say about me. And it was crazy how much they were actually were just like, they actually would say those things because that's what I was telling them to say. I was giving them the, the wavelength. I was giving them the, the cheat codes, basically what to say. Uh, and I think like I was just doing that to help them. Uh, but I think it worked. So I didn't awesome. say a single word. Yeah, that's a similar experience for me as well at the same exact time. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and let's move on here to the next one. Oops. Uh, so the creative imagination is the receiving set of the brain, which receives thoughts released by the brains of others. When stimulated or step, stopped to a high rate of vibration, the mind becomes more receptive. The stepping up process takes place through positive or negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So I think when I see this, uh, the big thing I see here is that like emotion really drives our imagination, right? One way or the other one. Um, and so like, again, we'll, we'll talk about this. Um, well, I'll use an example again from last week again, so the event was just, it was really powerful. But we can either be motivated by fear or we can be motivated by um, by gain, right? And that's where I would consider like positive or negative emotions. But either way, like the emotions were really powerful. So just understanding that like those, when we get emotional like that, like that's what really drives our thoughts and that's what drives our creativity to either like move away from pain or move towards gain. Um, like that's a really powerful motivator motivator and understanding that like that's how we that's how we are that's how we are influenced basically mm -hmm. right yeah get on and, and that's the part i wanted to talk about as well and to me it all goes back to <clears throat> what we talked about with the limitless mindset and if you haven't watched those episodes i highly recommend that you do because you're gonna learn a lot but we we make or we make decisions, we create beliefs with our imagination really creatively, really powerfully when we're feeling emotional, mm -hmm. right? And if we decide to use the negativity to, to build negative beliefs, then we see the impact that that has in our lives, right? Like if you believe you're never going to be wealthy, then you, you're correct. And, you're wrong. and so this is where some of the hacking goes in. It's like, okay, being aware of when I'm feeling really positive or really negative, when the brain is vibrating like crazy, like this is when I have a decision to, to use that. Or to, or to move away from it in a, in, a, in a better direction. So if your brain's vibrating super positively, you're like, okay, now's the time. Let me make some new beliefs. Let me let me decide what it is that I want to believe about myself and what I want out of my life. And then when you're feeling really negatively, you have a responsibility to say like, okay, hold on. I have an opportunity to, to make a decision here. What's it gonna be? And so that all comes down to the creative imagination because we've talked before about how your brain does not know the difference between imagination and reality. So when you use your imagination, you have to use it responsibly. You have to be really careful with it, honestly, and, and make sure you're using it to your benefit, not to your detriment. Well, you know, the, the example that I think of is with my daughter, my two-year-old. And when she starts to get frustrated, starts to cry, she just like gives up, right? She like, like for an example, yes, she was a good example. She was frustrated because she couldn't she has these new shoes that have like a little zip up on the side and she was frustrated because she couldn't do it. she started throwing a fit right and she's like i can't do it i can't do it pops it's funny. well do you think by you throwing a fit by you by you saying that do you think you, you think it's gonna help you i can't do it you know like doom didn't want to acknowledge it and um by by having that negative emotion she like basically just confirmed that she was not gonna be able to do it she's like i just can't do it right and then once she got calmed down it's like hey stand up, smile and say, I can do it. Just say it, just, just try it. Like, and I trick her into this by saying, just pretend, just pretend, just pretend to be happy. And, um, and then she zips up her, her thing, right? And then she's like, hmm, okay, right? And like, it, it really is so simple as that like, when we're able to put ourselves in a positive state, we're able to be more creative, we're able to be solution oriented. Um, and then again, but the other way around is when we get super negative or we get emotional, we just say we can't, then all of a sudden, like, and then we're right about that too. Like, then we just can't. And so I see that as being a super powerful way to be able to control your emotions. And then again, back to the event we talked about last week is that emotional intelligence is like one of the most, this is the, one of the strongest uh, skills that you can ever, you can ever acquire is your ability to be able to control your emotions and be able to 
transfer negative energy into positive energy or to make or to keep positive energy positive energy and just be able to live uh in a state of in a beautiful state all the time rather than just like when you feel like it or when it accidentally happens it's like choosing that state and making it um making it something that you design rather than it just happens by accident right make it choose to make it your default mm -hmm. so that way on your worst days when you're living by default you're still in that beautiful state and and i like how chris said it saying um like you have the ability to command and summon any emotion at will as well which i think most of us can feel sad whenever we want to feel sad like that's mm -hmm. pretty easy but to be able to feel happy and joy and or joyful and also like feel productive at any given moment it's just as easy provided you have the groundwork or the framework in place to where you have the willingness to believe that that is actually possible problem is it's a lot easier when living by default to adopt negative beliefs that will in inevitably inhibit you from being able to summon those positive emotions but once you figure that piece out and yeah you can bring it to the table anytime you want and you don't even have to take it off the table it's pretty amazing it, it reminds me of one of the one of the speakers joseph mcclennan um and basically made a flow chart of how how people make decisions it's like think feel do have and th that feeling one is the one that i've never seen actually put in there but it's like okay we have a thought and we feel something we, and we feel emotion and then based on that emotion then we do something and so being able to change that feeling is what's going to allow you to have be able to allow you to do the right things to have what you want and he his little um little exercise like standing up and say i'm a badass right that was his basically his way of getting himself into a a state that was positive and made him want to do the wanted him to do the do right do the thing that needed to get done i think that's really powerful it's like anytime you don't want to do what you like do the things like you gotta get yourself you, then that means you just gotta change your feeling right and that is something that is just emotional intelligence like, so change your feeling that way you're able to do your do because ultimately logically you know what you need to do it's just, it's just your feelings get in the way so change your feelings exactly and to talk about that presentation a little bit more the one that i got the part that i got the most out of and that i've been doing every day since is you know whenever i so a good example is like i'm looking at all these messages that i have to respond to and it starts to get overwhelming I'm like oh my gosh like what if i don't have the answer or what if what if what if and instead of going down that path and not doing anything and then feeling worse well, i'll stand up I'll make a silly sound, you know, I'll go or whatever, I'll just do something that's inherently goofy and then decide to fill, fill my brain with, with positive thoughts because I'm doing like a reset and call it a pattern interrupt. And then all of that's fine. But then the part that really makes me feel good is, is I literally pat myself on the back and I've, I've never done that before. I've never praised myself for doing a good job. I've never allowed myself to celebrate small things, really even big things. So to sit here and celebrate every little like positive thing that I do you get that dopamine rush, it makes it so much easier to do it again and again and again, because your brain wants that. It wants to feel good. Mm. So it, you just got to give yourself a chance to, but yeah, it's, it's actually really funny. Like I'll just smile, like pat myself on the back and be like, Hey, good job. And it feels so silly, but it, it also feels really good. And I mean, it's been a game changer the last, what is it? It went in the last week. So it's pretty fun. You know, it's, 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 it's funny. And it's funny to say that like it seems silly to pat yourself on the back but it seems normal to 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 be able to criticize yourself and tell yourself you're not good enough right like that's like kind of the standard our culture that we live in but actually like what is more helpful like what is what the, what's going to serve you better like the person pats himself on the back or the person who curses themselves out exactly you know and, and, and yet it's just and yet questioning it's, it's not stuff. weird sorry go yeah, ahead no, go for it go for it just, just going to say like, you're right. Like it's, it, you know, it's weird to pat yourself on the back, but not weird to criticize yourself, but then it's not frowned upon to, you know, pat somebody else on the back and it is frowned upon to criticize them. So, yeah. so why do we have higher standards for how we treat other people compared to how we treat ourselves? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. You know, whatever standards you have for treating other people, you know, treat others, how you want to be treated, treat yourself. Like you want to treat others. Mm. I think a, a more impactful statement. Yeah. That's actually really good interesting i think sometimes it's a lot of just questioning our defaults right just questioning just questioning why we do the things we do and it's like does this serve me does it serve me to talk crap about myself does it serve me to um you know to have these limiting beliefs 
And then ultimately, if you're able to question those things, you're able to come up with better answers. Because if you don't question, you don't get any answers. You don't get any answers, right? Exactly. All right. And so, so basically the way they have it set up here is the brain is basically programmed into three different categories. So you have the subconscious mind, the creative imagination, and auto-suggestion. And so the subconscious mind is the sending station, creative imagination is the receiving station, and auto-suggestion is basically what is creating the broadcasting station. So John, I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you sort of break this down and, and see what you come up with here. So, so auto-suggestion, how I understand it, is going back to limiting beliefs. Know, or well just beliefs in general it doesn't have to be limiting the beliefs that you have deep in your subconscious about yourself about the world about other people and so 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 these are subconscious beliefs correct subconscious beliefs um i so I'll, I'll give you an example really quick i had maybe not that quick but i had a, a tough conversation with my sister yesterday she's been she's been having a tough time most of her life with anxiety with living by default um and the more in tune I get with auto suggestion, with subconscious beliefs, the more I see how that's actually impacting her life in a way that she clearly doesn't want. And so we just had a really tough conversation yesterday. I was just basically questioning everything, all of her beliefs. I, I didn't get up on a soapbox, at least not for very long, but it was just really interesting to watch like how her auto suggestion is actually framing her life. And if you allow that to run rampant, if you allow negative beliefs, limiting beliefs to come to come to fruition in your subconscious, it doesn't matter how logical you are. Because she would kept she kept saying things like, "Yes, I know," like, you know, "No, I don't want that," or you know, this, this, and this. A lot of a lot of times, like I know or I don't know, which just means that you're avoiding the question. But it was the logical side doesn't actually mean all that much when it comes down to what you do. So in order to, like, you need to accept that like, logically what you know doesn't make a difference. It's, it's subconscious to what you believe that determines how you act and how you feel. So when you get dive into auto-suggestion, it totally is. Like that is the medium by which you put into operation your broadcasting station. That's the only thing that determines what you are sending out to the world is, is your subconscious, other than what you say logically. But we know that we have energy from brainwaves. So you can say one thing, mean another, People are going to pick up on that. You might not realize it, but they're going to pick up on that in their subconscious. So not the most organized train of thought there, but the whole point is that with auto-suggestion, with beliefs, that does determine what type of energy you're putting out of the world. And as a result, the law of attraction, what you're getting back in your life. And so with that being said, are you, is there a way to train that subconscious mind to, to train those, those, those brain waves that, you're, that, that, um, those, those waves that, that you're sending out to the world 100 percent. the only the only way to to get to the point where you have a lot of negative beliefs is by training it you just don't realize that that's what you're doing you get what you practice um i, I heard a i heard a, a phrase that i never really thought of before at the event was that this person had been practicing depression mm. and i i found that that was like a punch to the gut it was, <laughs> it was so good because yeah. he, he, he's right you know, when you're, when you're allowing yourself to dive into, into those things, you are practicing it and you get what you practice. So instead, without giving all the details, you need to practice the opposite. Practice positivity, practice positive beliefs, right? Practice changing what you actually believe. And if you watch, again, the Limitless Mindset episodes that we had before, you'll actually learn all the steps to doing that and understand how it works. But that's the only way to actually train your brain. We do it all the time. We just don't realize it. Yeah. No, hundred percent agree. And I think that's you know, practicing your beliefs. So what you're saying, like, well, like what are the words you, what are the words you're speaking to yourself? Are you talking to yourself positively? Are you talking to yourself? Like, how do you speak to yourself? Like, that's how you're training yourself. Um, and you know, and that's where it comes to like having mantras, having um, you know, having phrases that you say. Like, those are the things that you just keep on. You continue to remind yourself of. What is the like? What is the message you want to deliver to yourself, and then also to deliver to the world as well? Because right? how you speak about yourself is a good, um, there's a good chance of how you speak about the world, right? And that's through the principle of of, of projection, right? Like we see, 
we see through the world what we see in, in ourselves you know so like like the like the bad in the world we see that, like that's the bad that we have in us and and so on and so forth and so ensuring that you do speak positively to yourself and that you do have good beliefs that you are a positive person well then you also you'll see the world in a better light as well exactly right. um and then the other like like the creative imagination is a receiving station i think um I think practicing being creative, like that's a skill. I think sometimes people think of creativity as just being like a natural gift, but I think it's something that needs to be practiced. It's like you need to practice your creativity. It's like it's like doing like a like a word problem or a or a math problem or any sort of problem. Like when you get better at solving problems, you you become more creative. And I ultimately think that sometimes people just think that creativity is something that is just yeah by default. But I actually think it's something like that needs to be practiced. It needs to be something, um, that's what I'm looking for. Fostered it needs to be something that is, it's just, it's just it, it's something that, 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 that needs to be practiced every single day in order for it to get better. Yep, I totally agree. And along similar lines, I, I told myself up until very recently that I'm, I'm not an ideas guy. I don't have ideas. Like I just, they just don't come to me. And, and now I'm uh, I'm in a new position in life where I have to come up with ideas. I don't have a choice anymore. And lo and behold, I uh, I made a, a Trello board. If you know what Trello is, it's, or if you don't know what that is, it's like a project management tool. It's really simple and, and fun to use. And I it's just I have a column for ideas. And now all of a sudden I have like eight of them in there. And that's coming from a guy who, who's been telling himself that he has no ideas. And so a big part of that is because I've been thrust into something that more, you know, I don't have a choice. But it also just goes to show, like, I just gave myself a platform for it. And all of a sudden, I've been able to think of these things. And I'm thinking of them naturally without even trying to, because that's my, that's my new position. So I told myself, like, I'm an ideas guy now. But if I had just continued to say, like, no, nope, I don't come up with ideas. I just don't. Then, yeah, I won't. Of course not. But that doesn't mean that I'm not a creative person. It literally just reminds me of the story I just told out Lainey. It was like, the moment she says, I can't do it, throws a fit. Like, of course, you can't do it. But the moment you say, oh, I can do this. I can do it, pops. Figure it out, right? It's the same thing. So once you decide, oh, now I have to be creative. Now I am an ideas guy. Go identify yourself as an ideas guy. It almost becomes an ideas. Exactly. It's been weird yeah. how that works. At this point, like, it's not even weird anymore. <laughs> it's just, yeah, that makes sense. And another, another phrase I picked up from the event was, and I, I've lived my life this way, but never said so simply is just say yes now figure it out later or not later but say yes now and figure it out rather than sitting here trying to figure it out and then saying yes so for me with my ideas it was like well i need to have a great idea so i'm just going to sit here and think of a great idea no just just say yes to ideas in general and eventually you'll have a really good idea even if you have 10 bad ones before it but you have to you have to open yourself up to receiving ideas in the first place and this goes back to really any concept. You have to go back to, you have to open yourself up to receiving positive thoughts. You have to be willing to do so, to receive positivity in the world. And you have to be willing to see it. But if you're unwilling to see it at all, of course you're never going to find it. And going back to conversation with, with, my, with my sister, um, she's never defined what she wants in life. And so I asked her really simply, I said, if, if you don't know what you want, is it reasonable to assume that you're going to get it? And of course the answer was no, but first she said, I don't know, but regardless, it's, you, you have to open yourself up to those things. Cause if you don't, you're never going to find it. It's that simple. It's crazy. And you know what, you know, what's crazy is the brain. The brain is a crazy little machine here. And somehow we found a way to talk about the brain. Um, we had no idea what we were going to talk about at all during this whole during this whole roundtable. So, <laughs> yep, <laughs> we figured it out. We just committed to the brain, John, and somehow we figured it out. I have no idea how exactly. to do that. Yeah, we we said yes to being on this call today. That's right. <laughs> that was it. And so, <laughs> and so yeah, and so the brain. This was the twelfth of the thirteen steps and riches of, of the thirteen steps to riches in the Think Grow Rich Mindset book. Uh, so next week is our is our final episode the thing go rich mindset series um and so yeah so john 
Thanks for hopping on here today, sharing your wisdom. We'll be back next week with step number 13. The 13 step. 13 to 13. All right. Let's go. Lucky number 13. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll, we'll be back next week. See ya. Bye.